Hello everyone, today we're talking about Scapple, how to use it and how to make the most out of it. Um, Scapple is a mind mapping program. It is available through the, La the Literature and Latte website. This is their publisher, Literature and Latte. Um, and there is a free trial available. I suggest you try it out and see if you like it. It is also available for the Mac as well as for Windows. I'm using it on Windows at the moment, but you should definitely try it out if you're interested in the organization of research, the organization of thoughts, and, and just getting getting all these things, all these um, um, bubbles of ideas down on paper, or in this case, onto your computer screen. So, what exactly is Scapple and what does it look like? But uh, here it is. Scapple is uh, this blank space. It's it's a blank canvas that you can interact with, and and it looks simple and it, it, it's elegant in its simplicity. Um, but it's actually much more powerful than it looks. Um, and so we we can begin with the very simple instructions that it gives us um, right up from the bat. It says double click anywhere to create a note drag notes onto one another to make connections and that is really the heart and soul of this program we can double click to make notes here's a new note we're going to call it note one and we're going to make another note called note two and all I did was literally double click on the space and as you can see I can move these now I can move them all around all I want note two note one everywhere I go and I can link them. All I have to do is take note, one note, and put it over the other. By putting one note over the other, we create a simple link. This this simple connection going from one to the other. Um, we can also, however, give it a direction. In other words, turn that connection into a directed path, an arrow that tells us that something is moving, that something is happening in this direction from note 1 to note 2. Um, we can also, for example, do bidirectional from here clicking the note 2. See, as, as you can see, if I move it around, the connection remains. I can also resize these. And so I can also, by pressing, by, by pressing Alt, and then clicking the note, I can then once again give it a separate direction. So now it has two directions, going left and going right, and from one note to the other and from the other note to the one. And so this relationship building of notes is actually really important and really interesting because um, it gives you a lot of freedom. Um, now. I remember sitting in English class when I was little, or, or you know, not that little, but when I was in maybe in high school, and they would say, "Okay, well, you have to uh, write a story, and you need to mind map it first. You need to create a, this brainstorming map of ideas." And so you would then do, "Okay, so this is my main idea, main idea, and then this is sort of um, sub." idea one and then I can create another sub idea two and so now I have these two sub ideas and then once again I can link them I can link them to each other oops oh here we go I can link them to each other all I'm doing is clicking and dragging above and then letting go and there we have this this link and as I move these follow the lines now let's say that this sub idea one uh, is no longer connected to the main idea I can just click it and bring it over the main idea and poof it's gone that connection is now gone and I can then if I if I want I can rebuild it now keep in mind that this is a, a, a very elegant way of organizing ideas and it's not a new way there are many mind ma mapping programs there are many programs that do this um, and and a lot of them do it to certain degrees of success there there some of them are better for different fields of knowledge for different ways of thinking 
I personally like this for my area, which is history. For history, I think this is a wonderful way of organizing things. Now, I'm going to select them all and delete them, get back to a clean canvas, so that we can then do something more interesting. Now, I'm going to go to the File menu and open a recent, um, a, a recent mind map that I created. Now, this is a mind map of all of the things that my class talked about um, prior to the midterm exam. So, this has things that the students would know that, 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 that they are. And, and of course, if you look closely, this is an unfinished mind map. This is, here's industrialization by itself, unconnected, urbanization is unconnected, rise of corporations is unconnected, the Spanish-American war is just sitting here doing nothing, the rise of labor unions, all of these things have to be connected. Now, what's the point of this? Well, one, it organizes my thoughts. I like to do this. Um, to organize, um, I can organize my my lesson plans, I can organize my research, I can organize anything I want, even projects outside of academia. It, this is really for what you think it is, meaning mind mapping concepts. Now, take a close look at this at this general mind map. This this entire mind map, I've used one of the notes to create a title. Now, if I right-click on this title, I have to do it a few times, I don't know why, but if, you, if I right-click on this title, you can see some of the, the functionality that I'm allowed to, to use here. For one, I can tell it that I want no border, right? And now the border is gone. And so, and so now I have more of a sort of a, of a classic title just sitting there above everything else. Um, I can also... Let me. I can align the edges. I can I can distribute the 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 text. Um, I can I can I'm sorry. I can distribute the the, the bubbles themselves, uh, however I want the the notes. I can um, I can color these. So as this title, I'm going to give it another. I'm going to give it a thicker border. So there we go. A very thick border. And I'm also going to maybe give it some color. Um, we will do a blue bubble for the title. And now I'm going to let's see if I can put back the thick border. There we go. Now it has a blue, a thick blue border with this light blue background. There's not a lot of options. I wish there was more options in terms of shapes, for example. We only get really here we go. We only get four shapes, a cloud shape, a jagged shape, a square, and essentially what, what works out to be a rounded uh, rectangle or a rounded square. Um, we can, if we move it to the cloud, it's a little childish, maybe someone likes something like that. I think there's usefulness to this. For instance, I can, I can use that cloud to, to, to think about what kinds of thoughts right should or what kinds of questions should we be asking so for example here the Dawes Act I can I can say um, what is this right and maybe I'll give it a cloud so that so that it's obvious that it's not part of the whole concept but instead it, it is something separate it is it is instead of a question, and and I, and I think that's the best way to use some of these. It's it's a way to differentiate certain notes from others, and and perhaps remind yourself of why they exist. There, um, we can, for example, and this is probably one of my my favorite 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 um, uh, 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 functionalities. One of my favorite functionalities of Scapel is the ability to link outside of Scapel. So one of my favorite functionalities of Scapel is the ability to link outside of Scapel. So for example, here's the Spanish-American War. Now the Spanish-American War um, 
it has a lot of components and a lot of things. It probably deserves, it definitely deserves its own scapel sort of mind map. But we can take the Spanish American War here and we can say, okay, I'm going to link that somewhere. So I'm going to do Control Shift L and I get this dialog box that says link right at the top. And this dialog box um, wants me to give it a destination, so so a web address, if you will. Give me a web address. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open a new window and we're going to find the Spanish American War on the internet and um, here is a website about the Spanish American War. Here's the Wikipedia page. Let's use the Wikipedia page for simplicity. Um, and I'm going to copy the link. Copy. And now I will paste it. Okay. And there it is. And so what's happened is I have just put in a link to an outside information source. This means that this isn't static. This is this isn't you're not confined to this. You can essentially create a a a, a small database of of links that go into different places. So for instance we can take this Chinese Exclusion Act once again control shift L and now I'm going to find the Chinese Exclusion Act. Chinese Exclusion Act. Oh, well, Chinese for Exclusion Act, apparently. The Chinese Exclusion Act. And here's the Wikipedia page. I'm just using Wikipedia for, you know, because why not? Um, and we're copying it, we're bringing it back to Scapel, pasting it in. Okay, there it is. And what happens is now that it's linked, Anytime you open this up, you don't have to search for all these things ever again. I can essentially, and I can give this to my students, this is the best part of this, is that I can give a breakdown of everything I'm covering in the class and give them online resources that they can use. And so in this case, the Chinese Exclusion Act, if they missed my lecture, if they don't know what I'm talking about, if they've never heard of the Chinese Exclusion Act, then they can just come here, double click it, double click it, double click it. Let me click away. And now, ah, it, it's it's not popping up because it's already popped up. It's already here. So I'm going to close this. Uh, close tabs. I have five Chinese Exclusion Acts open there. And so now I'm going to open it again. And chances are that it opened somewhere else. In that case, I had to right-click it. Okay, so the Chinese Exclusion Act is there. Now I'm going to double-click it. And there it is. The Chinese Exclusion Act opened up. So we can so so we can link to outside sources, and and that is amazing that is great because that means that this is alive in a sense this is something that can carry more than that now can carry more than what it shows it it, it, it expands the possibilities now um, there is a another trick that you could do this because it can open up a link then that means that it can also open up a file now this doesn't always work with all programs but if you understand how the web browser functionality works, um, then you know that, that the address uh, system is really not that different from anything else. So for example, I can do, I can come here and I can say, well, here is a document. We're going to do, we're going to do a single document. So I'm just going to call it single, if I can spell, we're going to call it single document just to, to give us a, an example. Um, and so here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting it first, I'm doing Control shift l so 
now it's asking me to provide it with the link that it wants. Um, but we're going to do something a little bit different, right? Instead of looking at a link on the internet, then I can maybe open um, a local link. In other words, I can open a file from inside my computer through Scapple, and I'll show you um, how to do that. In fact, let's start a brand new Scapple. New Scapple. We are going to give it a, a title of um, um, ongoing research. Ongoing research, right? And so here we have ongoing research, and maybe I want to denote on here what is the folder in which I am saving all of this information. So I'm going to say this is my document depository. And that is misspelled. Which, by the way, this is great that we have a spell check right here. A document depository. So this document depository is where I keep all of the files that I have been accumulating and, and so forth. So for the sake of this example, I'm going to just use one folder. And so once again, I'm going to control shift L and the window comes up, link destination. And I will go and open up a file. Oh, this is a, a folder of a frame. Here are some random documents that I've collected. And if you look at the top, that this this um, the way that that Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and I imagine Windows 10 when it comes out um, shows you your folders is is not really conducive to showing you the path. It's instead sort of giving you this this graphical interface. Now, if you click on this path, you should see the actual path of the file, that is the C drive and then under users, deletes, downloads, and then the actual folder in which it's in. So if we just want to create a link to a folder within the computer, all we need is this link right here. We can just copy it, right? I just right click, copy, and I'm going to bring it here, paste. And so we have the link there. However, that link is not going to work by itself. So we just write, let it know that this is accessing the file system. We'll do file colon backslash backslash backslash. Okay? Or front slash. It's a slash. That's what you need to know. And it's three of them. Right? And so we do OK. And there it is. Now it's linked, except that it's linked. It's linked to a folder within the computer. This is not a link onto the internet. So if I double click this, what happens is, here we go, here we have my folder. The folder just pops up because the link says go to this folder. However, um, what if I want to talk about these particular documents here, right? Here is a published article about um, feminist uh, fight against prostitution this is a an article in in uh, mostly in Spanish. The I think the abstract is in English. Um, so let's say that we want to use this article itself, right? So the problem is we don't get automatically. Windows does not show us the path of the file. We know, however, that where the file is, and we can reconstruct it. We can say, okay, well, here's the name of the file, and here is the path. But we don't really need to do that. Um, and the best way to do this is to press shift and right click on the name of the file and you will see an option that shows up copy as path. This copy as path option is probably the easiest way to get this. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to open up a new note and I'm going to say Feminism Against Prostitution and I'm highlighting it, I'm doing Control Shift L once again to bring up the, the link and now I'm going to paste my path in there 
And so as you can see, the path now has the full path with the um, with the file name, the PDF is mentioned there. It also brings up these quotes. So I'm going to get rid of the quotes because I don't want to interfere. And we're going to say file colon slash 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 three of them remember and then hit OK and there it is. And now when I click on this something magical is going to happen. It will open up Adobe Acrobat because it is a PDF file. So it's opening up Adobe Acrobat. Let me try it again. Double click and there it is. Uh, it does take a second. It has to find the file. It has to open up the program and it has to show it to you. And therefore, uh, you know, it's not the fastest way to this. Um, but nevertheless, here's the document. So I can actually now have actual documents linked in. So here in my document depository, I can then, here's another, again, somewhat random document. I'm going to right click the document. And notice that if I just right click the document, copy as path doesn't show up. In order to see copy as path option, I need to, I need to press shift and then right click the document and then copy as path shows up and this might look different on your computer it should it depending on what you have installed uh, you might see different things but nevertheless copy as path will show up if you shift and then right click upon the document um, another way to get the path is to right click on the document go to properties and note this path is only to the folder, but if you go to security, it'll show you a path to the full, to the actual file with the full path, and you can then actually copy that. And once again, we go back to Scapel, and we can say, oh, here is the letter to Garrison. And now, once again, we are going to highlight if I can get the highlight control shift L and now we have the path once again and again this time it doesn't have the quotes um, but this time we just do the same thing file colon slash 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 three of them hit OK and there is the file once again and again when I click on it, it will open uh, Adobe Acrobat to read the file because it is a PDF file. If it's a Word file, it will open whatever um, is associated with whatever file type you have. So if it's a Word file, it will open MS Word. Uh, if you have it, if you have Office installed, if if you if you open any of a number of things. Now, another really great thing though is because of the way it's working, because of the logic behind the program this means that you can also open another scapel window within a scapel uh, uh, document a, a scapel file so where so in other words if you don't want to create this massive scapel uh, uh, construction that is maybe too wieldy and, 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 and too far gone to fully understand you can then s simple simplify each of those ideas into separate scapel mind maps which then you can call from within using the same exact method by going to the scapel file and opening it up through as a file linked in another scapel file um, now there is a limit to the program the program is 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 scales quite well it opens up to a lot but I've had it crashed it crashed on me once um, and it crashed on me once when I had a massive scaffold built and it was just uh, um, I had over 300 connections on the screen at the time and I had all these things prepared and I was so stupid that I did not save it beforehand and, and I think everyone at some point in time learns the lesson that you should save often and yet I did not.
I, I, I don't know why I had not, in fact I had a meeting with my advisor that day and I was going to show him my full dis dissertation research, I was going to say hey look at all my research, look at everything I've done and I was going to print it out and it was going to be beautiful and when I came back to the computer it had, it, it, it was stuck, it was, it was, it was hung up, um, nothing worked, nothing clicked, the entire program then crashed and I lost something like three days of work, um, irrecoverable, um, but stupid me for not saving for three days, and this is, you know, one of those things that happen. Um, but it made me think that maybe there is a limit to, to how far and how great and how big you might want to build these, these scaffolds. So, so it makes it a great idea to try and scale them appropriately. Um, nevertheless, um, this is a wonderful program. I really highly suggest that that you look into it and and that you use it. Um, you use the trial, see how it feels, see see if it works for you. Uh, like I said, there are many other mind mapping programs, and we might look at them in a future video. Um, um, but at the moment, this is the one that I'm using, and, 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 and I'm pretty happy with it, i got to say. Um, in the future, I think I'm going to do a video of how my full disser dis dissertation research looks when I put it all in this fashion on Scapple. Um, and again, we can go in every direction, and be, these things can be very simple, uh, or they can be very complicated and and it's it's really up to you you can link outside of the program to other uh files outside of the program you can uh you can export this you can print it out you can put it into a pdf file that you can then give to other people um it, it's really a a wonderful way of of organizing your thoughts and sharing that thought process which is so difficult uh particularly in history sometimes to share with others what exactly you you see in your research. Um, nevertheless, uh, I hope you guys um, found something interesting in this video, found something that you can use. Um, Scapple is, uh, the trial is free for 30 days, however, I believe right now the current cost is about $15 for either the Mac OS version or the Windows PC version. Um, check it out. And, um, you know, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.